Hello, if you remember in the previous lecture, uh, we learned how we can model zero order hold operator with a transfer function if we assume that input of a zero order hold operator is an uh, impulse train like signal. Instead of a discrete time signal, we can assume that the signal is in start form and can be represented with an impulse train. In this case, we know that we can uh, drive GHOSS. 1 minus e to the power minus ts divided by s. Okay, so in this lecture, we will try to understand the relation between z transform and zero order hold operator. In other words, let's assume that we have an output h of t. Okay, and I wonder, let's assume that I multiply it with a different signal, let's say uh, c of s. Okay, I obtain any signal y of s or y of t, let's say because it's a continuous time signal, y of t, and I sample it to obtain y star of t or y of k. Okay, so I sample a signal which has inherently includes term 1 minus e to power minus t s divided by s. Okay, so we will technically uh, need to do it in a digital control system because we have output and output uh, contains a zero order hold operation inside of itself because it is filtered by a zoh like uh, filtering signal. And we need to sample the output to close the feedback and apply a control. Okay, so what is the process? And let's like this and let's clean everything, simplify the problem a little bit. Okay, so let's assume that we have a signal. Okay. Uh, x of t, okay, and Laplace transform of x of t is equal to x of s, and x of s can be written in terms of two parts, g of s. g of s is an arbitrary uh, rational transfer function, or uh, Laplace domain expression, and the first part is the transfer function uh, of the zero order hold operator. Okay, so what we wonder is what happens if I obtain x star of t or x of k and then compute x of z. Is there any easy or simple relationship between x of z and g of s and 1 minus e to the power of ts divided by s? So this is the main topic of this video lecture. Okay, look. So let's start with x of t. So we know that x of t is Laplace inverse of x of s, which is equal to Laplace inverse, let's clean this. Okay, Laplace inverse of 1 minus e to the power minus t s divided by s, g of s, okay. So let's move s from here because s is like a very well-defined transfer function expression. 1 minus e to the power minus t s times g of s divided by s. Okay, that's great. This is equal to Laplace inverse of g of s divided by s minus Laplace inverse of e to the power minus t s g of s divided by s. Okay, so let's assume that Laplace transform of g of s divided by s is equal to g hat of t. Okay, we can also call it as g hat of s. Okay, this is good. So if I use it, x of t is equal to, as you can see, this is g hat of t, and Laplace transform of this is it's uh, g hat of t. If I multiply with e to the power minus t s, I add a delay in time domain and it will be equal to minus t. Okay, let's go to clean page. Okay, so let's clean this. So what I found that x of t is equal to g hat of t minus g hat of t minus t, where g hat of t is the Laplace inverse of g of s divided by s. Okay, that's great. So what I'm 
interesting is what happens if I sample x of t to obtain x star of t, okay? And I know that x k of t is equal to g hat k of t minus g hat k of t minus t. I can write it like this, g hat k of t minus g hat k minus 1 t. If I write a completely discrete time signal, x of k is equal to g hat of k minus g hat of k minus 1, which is pretty uh, well-defined Z-transform expression, which means that x of k is equal to g hat of k minus, it is one step delayed version. It's a pretty nice expression. Okay, if I take the Z-transform, x of z is equal to g hat of z minus g hat of z times z bar minus 1. x of z is equal to 1 minus z bar minus 1 g hat of z. Okay, so let's go to a clean page. Okay, so I found that x of z is equal to 1 minus z bar minus 1 g hat of z. So what is g hat of z? g hat of z is equal to z transform of, okay, so I will write it and explain it, g of s, s star. Okay, so I have g of s and I divide it by s. Okay, it says, uh, let's say, this is g hat of s. I obtain a Laplace transform expression. I take the inverse Laplace to obtain g hat of t. Okay, it's a continuous time signal. I start it, which means that I sample it to obtain g hat star of t, which is a discrete time or discrete time looking signal. And I take the z transform to obtain g hat of z. Okay, as you can see, this is a very long notation. In the textbook, what they do is they shorten it to obtain something like this. Uh, Z transform of G of S divided by S. Okay, so this is completely wrong. It's a, a true abuse of notation. We cannot do that normally, okay? And this is a good textbook. Why we are doing it? Because this is a very long notation and it's kind of shortened version of this. So if you see something like take the Z-transform of a, a Laplace domain expression, of course you cannot do that because you can take the Z-transform for discrete time signals uh, only. It means that if you have expression like this, take the inverse, the inverse Laplace transform, sample it, then take the Z-transform. Okay, so this is a shorthand notation for this operation. Okay, so if we go back, so we can uh, simplify the whole process like this. So x of z is equal to 1 minus z to the power minus 1 c transform of g of s divided by s. That's it. Okay. Good. So we found the results and now we will solve an example uh, to refresh our knowledge. Okay. So very good. So we already know that. Let's clean it and solve an example. Okay, so the idea is, okay, x of s is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus s divided by s, 1 over s plus 1, okay? So we have x of t, and I sample it with t is equal to 1 to obtain x of k or x of kt, it doesn't matter, or x of star. And I wonder what is x of z, which is the z transform of x star of t. Okay, so uh, we will do the same uh, derivation uh, that we uh, obtained in the previous slide. Okay, so let's clean it and try to find it. So x of z is equal to 1 minus z to the power minus 1, z transform of, if you remember, what I do is, I separate S from here. This is my G of S, okay? 
this is equal to 1 over s s plus 1 okay so i need to take the z transform of this this is my g of s this is my g of s divided by s okay that's good so x of z is equal to 1 minus z e power minus 1 z transform of let's use partial fraction exponential here 1 over s minus 1 over s plus 1 okay this is equal to 1 minus z e to power minus 1 okay uh, so okay so what is this this is unit step right u of t and what is this this is equal to uh, e to power minus t okay very good uh, so what i will do is uh, i will take the uh, z transform of the sampled signal so it will be u of k i know that it is equal to z over z minus 1 okay so i sample it it is equal to minus k t okay so if you look at the tables i can easily find that it. it's equal to z over e to power minus 1 okay so uh, just look at the like tables and uh, other properties and it is equal to z minus 1 divided by c z over z minus 1 minus z over z minus e to the power minus 1 okay that's great this is equal to 1 minus z to the power minus 1 no not uh, sorry for that if you do the, all of the expressions okay uh, z minus 1 z minus e to the power minus 1 and it is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus 1 z minus e to the power minus 1 okay so you can just write e to the power minus 1 in terms of its numerical way it's fine and uh, this is the result as you can see uh, there's important level of bookkeeping because what we do is so first of all we start with this so let's change the colors uh, do this uh, we obtain g of s divided by s in this case it is equal to 1 over s times s plus 1 okay so we need to take inverse z transform of this 1 over s uh, minus 1 over s plus 1 is the partial fraction expansion as you can see i found the time domain expressions and i sampled them and take the z transform of this and finally it is our uh, z transform expression okay so uh, in the uh, book you will see that there are expressions that are easy like uh, shortcuts how you can sample 1 over s uh, how you can take inverse, inverse Laplace transform, sample it, and take the Z transform uh, in terms of Z or Z minus 1. Okay, so there are tables which kind of transforms this into this, okay, because there are a couple of steps in between. Instead of just rem remembering and rem memorizing everything, you can just look at the tables, uh, apply the necessary uh, change of transformation that is given by tables to obtain this uh, result. Okay, so we will show many examples. Uh, which includes this approach and i think uh, by solving these kind of examples you will understand better how we can deal with the uh, zero order hold operators expression uh, it's a lot loss transform and c transform